Hey, welcome back to Taiji Fencing 101. Here we are at part four, and we're going to talk a little about scoring in tournaments versus casual play. And I know I went over that a little earlier in the uh, clean cuts versus dirty cuts video, I believe. But I just want to make sure it's very clear, so that way people that are practicing at home or running uh, Taiji Fencing in their martial arts schools are, uh, are on the same page and working together with other schools. And hopefully we can start bringing our communities together once everyone's practicing. So where we're going to start now is let's look at the different increments of measurement of time. So we have what we started with in the last video. We talked about this. We have the engagement. So anytime the swords are touching, that's one engagement. And so from there, we have another engagement. Great. Now, if no cuts are made and the swordsmen continue flowing, and neither one thinks that they cut the other one, so they re-engage, we can have one engagement, and then we can disengage and continue and have two engagements and disengage and continue, three engagements, and then once one of us gets a cut, neither of us got it, but once we get a cut, we step back. That's the end of the exchange. And each exchange is worth one point, except for the very first exchange between two swordsmen. That's worth two points if it's a clean cut. So if this is our first match together, then the first time one of us gets, a, the, gets the first cut, so right now, let's say Angel cuts my hand and he gets a clean cut, boom, Angel would get two points for that. And this is because in real life, the first cut's the important one, and so we weight that. If that first cut was dirty and that first exchange, and he got my hand and then I got his arm, then no double points are awarded and all future clean cuts are only worth one point still. Now, this is that weighting of the reality of the sword fight, and so that's why the first one is most important. Okay, so we have multiple engagements inside of an exchange, and the exchange ends with the referee or the cut uh, breaking up the fight, and they call a point. If it's continuous, then the point will be called while they re-engage. If it's point-based with breaks, then you'll separate, realign, and have a new exchange with multi one or more engagements within it until there is a cut landed. So what we have now is we're trying to gain points in a round, and the number of points or number of rounds will be based on the event. So if we're here, and we come in, and Angel gets a clean cut on my hand, boom, and I come back around, I can't get him, one, two steps, boom, he gets a point, he wins the exchange, he has the first point of the round, and so he gets two points for that, OK? So this is the idea where now, instead of us just having one fight, we're going to have multiple rounds. And it's not who wins the most exchanges. It's who wins the most fights or most rounds, which make up the match. And so if Angel wins that first setup of flow, my emotions may be a little off kilter or responsive to that situation. And I may, uh, I may fall behind. He will win that first round, we'll reset, we'll clear our minds, maybe someone else will fight in between, and then we'll come back, and then we'll try again. Once again, that first cut is worth two points, because it's the new round, and then we'll continue on with one point per clean cut in each exchange. And this way, you have a chance to reset your mind, reset your flow, and reset your body, even if you aren't doing so well at the beginning, or if your opponent gets a lead on you. Some things to remember, oftentimes we require a two point lead to win. So if it's the first one to five points and it's five to four, you need to get to six points to beat them before they get their fifth point also. Um, this is a way to make sure that you're winning and you're scoring the points. You're not just, uh, uh, you got lucky that time. We try to make sure it's clear to, to everyone that someone has uh, begun to understand the other person's sword style. Okay, so we have a tournament, and a tournament is made up of uh, brackets, and the brackets are made up of bouts. The bouts are made up of rounds. The rounds are made up of uh, exchanges, and the exchanges are made up of engagements. And this is how we can break down the flow. Now, if we're playing with our friends, once again, as we mentioned earlier, it's going to be continuous. We can acknowledge by calling. So let's try a couple called shots here. So let's play around, get a couple points back and forth. And whenever one of us gets tagged, the other one will call it arm. So Angel cut my arm because I called it. Finger. 
like <clears throat> Oh, leg. Attach my shoulder. Finger on the off hand. Clean. All right. Okay, so that was an example of us in casual play calling out what got cut. So Angel touches my arm, I call arm to acknowledge Angel's cut and give him his clean point. Now what happens is if Angel cuts my arm, and as he does that, I get his hand. I'll say arm, and he'll say hand to acknowledge that it was made dirty. So we're still playing the same idea of trying to make it clean. Now let's say I touch Angel, uh, Angel touches my arm, and I don't get him back. Boom. He's, I call arm. He will say clean, maybe. And that will let me know that he didn't get touched. OK? So once again, he cuts me. Boom. I didn't get him back, arm, clean. and now I know I heard him say clean. I don't know if you heard on the microphone, but, but now, I, now we have that kind of balance and we can continue our engagement on the same page. Now the other way that we can do this is we can just say clean and dirty. And so I'll cut and I'll say cut and you'll say clean or dirty if, if you were the initial attacker. So for example, I'm going to cut Angel this time and as I cut his hand, he's going to say cut. I'm going to say, and he comes back at me, boom, I'll say clean. So we'll do this after the break. So let's, let's do that one more time. I'm going to get the cut on you, and I'm going to come back. Cut. Yeah, and I'll say clean because I didn't get hit. And everyone will have a different flow. But I just want you to be familiar with how this goes with different partners. So we can call what got cut, or we can just say clean and dirty. Or like you saw before, Angel and I don't call anything at all usually. We just go at it, and we keep going, and we know when we got cut. But our goal is to survive. I'm hoping that the cut wasn't bad enough to make us stop. Uh, we're not giving it power over our movement, but we're acknowledging each other. Now we want to remember you have two steps, once with each foot in competition. So if you can move one foot twice, or you can move one, two, or you can move one, two, lean, and end up balanced in one-legged stance. And if you can do any of those, you have that much time to counterattack. Now, if I'm fighting with Angel here, and we're sword fighting back and forth a little bit, playing with the flow, and uh, uh, let's say he cuts my body somewhere, he cuts me, boom, he gets something, and I come back at him, one, and that's clean, get out of here. One, two, boom. So I couldn't get him maybe on the exit. But now if we go back and he doesn't run away, he just stays in the pocket, here, and he gets a cut on my, me, boom, cut me, there you go, come down, come down my arm. Boom, he cuts on me, and I didn't get him back, but he doesn't run away. Now, he's still here sword fighting, and I have more time to make it dirty. And so you want to remember the difference between casual sword fighting or play, casual play versus competitive, is that competitive is about getting out of the pocket as quick as possible after your cut because that's how much time your opponent will have to counterattack. In casual play, we tend to stay in the pocket and just acknowledge that we got cut and continue the momentum of the exchange into the next exchange without a pause. This way, we just continue getting better. We don't have to take that break and reset and always start from the beginning. Two different theories, but both are very valuable. One will teach you to always reset and be ready off the bat without having to preemptively understand your opponent's flow or feeling, but the other one will make you even sharper at responding to all different types of energy the more time you spend in that moment. And that's, this, that's the main practice in, behind Tai Chi fencing, is being able to stay in the sword fight and constantly cut with techniques and move in and out of your different movements that are in your other practices of sword in the Tai Chi fight. So let's try this again. We're going to play around a little bit, and we're going to do casual play, and we'll call the cuts so you guys can hear us or see them. So there's another example. Angel did a tap. I should have mentioned that. Good. Glad you brought that up. Angel didn't even say anything. He just tapped his hand. They say he got tagged in the arm.
Ah. All right, let's take a break. Good job. Okay, and so there's some more free play for you to see some more examples of Taiji fencing. Um, notice the control, notice that we're touching each other, but we're not hurting each other, but our speed is not missing, and at no moment were we unable to apply power in our cuts when it was the right time to use it. So we are able to functionally perform all the movements from our forms and our techniques and apply them in the right moments at the right timing. Uh, Okay, so we're going to go into the last video, which is going to discuss a little bit of what's going on with the left hand and also uh, how other techniques will apply into the sword fight.